So we will not take comments by the public. We have ordinance 2023-3, an ordinance admitting chapter 149, article 19, entitled B1 Central Business District of the Township Code. A motion. motion to approve ordinance 2023-3 on first reading. Second. 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 Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Perkins? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Banks? Yes. Thank you. That is passed. Ordinance 2023-4, 20, ordinance amending chapter 89, A-3 of the code to amend the maximum number of permitted cannabis retailer licenses within the township. Can I get a first? Make a motion to approve ordinance 2023-4 on first reading. Second. Anyone second? Second. Roll call. Ms. Astor? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Ms. Perkins? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Banks? Yes. Thank you. All right. Ordinance 2023-4 is passed. Ordinance 2023-5, an ordinance adopting a single site redevelopment plan for Madden's mm -hmm. Harbor site and block <coughs> 2022 mill, block 85, block 12, and 19 Church Street, block 85, block 42. Can I get a first? Make a motion to approve ordinance 2023-5, first reading. All second. Roll call. Ms. Astor? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Ms. Perkins? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Banks? Yes. Thank you. That ordinance has passed. All right. Moving on, we have matters to be presented by the public. <laughs> Members of the public are invited to submit comments during the public comment portion of this meeting. The council, pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act, will not publicly discuss personal matters or may choose not to respond to comments made by members of the public during this portion of the meeting. However, the council will give all comments appropriate consideration and will refer all individual complaints to the township manager or appropriate township representative for resolution. Each citizen will be allotted up to three minutes to speak in order to allow everyone an opportunity to express their opinions and concerns. I'll start anyone in the first row. State your, state your name. Okay. Louis Lopez, 98, Levers Drive, Mount Holly, New Jersey. First the question is, uh, Revolution uh, 2023-43 and 45. I wonder if you could clarify more. And uh, addition, I got two more additional comments after that. Is, is the 100 Township building is the uh, uh, it's ready in case of, you know, of a flood or something. I'm just worried about the security of the fourth floor in case of, if you get a flood or a heavy rain. I'm just curious, you know, the security of that building. And my last comment is, uh, for you, Jim, uh, is there any way to have the physical skating camping as well to have a guest in the next township meeting? Is there any way you could contact them just to come and say hello, you know, man, congratulate them? I would appreciate it. I say that as a freeholder, and they took my consideration. I wonder as about how the time she could do the same thing. I asked the freeholder, contact her, you know, to have her as a guest for the next time she meeting. That's my full comments. Great. Thank you. 
Hey, yeah, Josh. Um, you want to answer this question for? Okay, I have a suspensory at the Burger King is resolution 43. Resolution 45 is a grant that we receive mostly every year for uh, police safety. The reason it has, I don't have nothing for that. I mean, I work at that, at that address. I don't know not. You got to talk to your employers. Yeah. You mean the new uh, boss? Uh, you got to talk to your okay, thank you. Yep, sure. Maureen Taylor Ford, 117 Branch Street, Mahali. Um, I want to know what I need to do to get uh, some traffic calming devices on Route 537. Two years ago, when COVID first started, I was trying to work with, prior to many of you seated, it was two on the end, plus Mr. Brown here, Josh Brown, trying to get a uh, sidewalk put in. Mm -hmm. Two years later, the sidewalk was in fact put in. What I told the county, when I talked to the county engineer, I said that we need calming devices. I was told that because that is a, a county road, it is shared opportunity with Mount Holly, would have to figure something out. I want a light on that road. I live right there at the Y, the brick house across from Ashurst Lane. Now I've been a resident of Mount Holly for 17, almost 18 years. I, I lived in my property on Canary Lane, 215 Canary Lane, for pretty much 18 years prior to relocating over there before COVID. I still watch the high school children run across the street despite the township putting that nice sidewalk in. The sidewalk is used for adults who are walking their dog or situations of that nature. So I sit at my porch every day. I watch people speed <coughs> down that road. There are accidents almost every day. I'm watching people almost get hit running across the road. I'm watching cars, trucks, you name it. So what needs to be done on the Mount Holly side that they're going to work with the county, because I have all these emails from the county engineer, okay? And he was nice to tell me that no one's complained about it for 25 years, because that was the last time someone got hit on 537. Well, I'm there now, and I want something done. I have two high schoolers, I have four children in general that I put through RD, I have two still there. And I have two that's still running across the street because that sidewalk is too too far down. Like I originally told Mount Holly and the engineers that they went to install that sidewalk, which I am grateful is there. However, we need something else, okay? Now, I don't know, I was told that it's because the speed limit, if the speed limit is, I think, 40 or 45, you cannot put calming devices, um, something of that nature, I was told. I don't know the terminology and I don't know the specifics. So I'm here to find out. Who do I need to talk to? Who can you refer me to? What can my town should do to aid me as a citizen of this town, owning two properties and being a loyal resident for 18 years? Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? You guys? Second one? Go ahead. My name is Steve. Um, I own 200 Washington Street with my wife. Um, me and my wife both have been in Mount Holly our whole life. I'm sorry, Steve. Steve, your last name. Kunky, I'm sorry. Yeah. This is my first time doing something like this. Long story short, we've, we've been in Mount Holly our whole life, me and my wife. Uh, we decided to purchase our home in Mount Holly because of that, to be close to our parents. We bought 200 Washington Street. It's one of many homes in Mount Holly that have been redone by this guy named Frank. I'm sure you've seen his houses. They're all over. They kind of all look the same, but he takes older homes and makes them look nice. Anyway, if you drive down near 200, you'll see near us, there's like 10 homes that are redone. It's beautiful. Um, and he's, he's even doing more right now. And being from Mount Holly my whole life, Washington has had its ups and downs, um, but it's on its way up. And uh, we feel like, you know, hopefully us moving there has helped that. Like we, we try and take care of everything. Anyway, the reason I'm here is um, me and my neighbor <clears throat> deal with a very big trash problem. That street, it's gonna be dark when the meeting's over, but all of you live here, I'm assuming. Drive down Washington and you'll see what I mean. Just look like in every in between every house, then whatever there's fields, whenever there's an empty house. There's two problems, I guess. It's the bus and the liquor station, the liquor store. We see all my ring cameras, people just walk in, they throw stuff. So about a year ago, we've been there for a year and a half, me and my neighbor went out and we filled 25 big trash bags with trash. And we could have kept going and tripled that number. So then we did it again. Uh, and then he moved and I was left by myself and it's just a bigger project than I can handle. Me, a lot of my neighbors walk our dogs. That's the only place that we have is go up and down. 
uh, there's kids everywhere. And I mean, I could fill three big dumpsters right now just in like a one block radius on Washington Street. And I don't know what to do about it. So that's why I'm here. I guess it says you guys won't comment, but if you could really like take this to heart, cause it, there's a lot. I mean, you could drive by quick and maybe just see a little bit, but if you walk it one day, you'll see what I mean. Like we could fill dumpsters with the amount of trash. So we're gonna, I'm gonna continue like doing my part, but it's, it's way too little. So anybody that could think of a way to help or let me know how to help better, that's why I'm here. Pepsi. And do I have to stay for the whole meeting now that I'm here? Okay. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. I appreciate all of you. Yep. I gotta go back to work. <laughs> Um, I got the letter regarding the tree. I appreciate it. I have um, an issue regarding the letter states that they had contacted. Oh, yeah, Betty Jean Kessler, 418 Langstaff Avenue, Manhattan. Anyway, the letter states that they were in touch with Verizon Government Affairs Representative. There's no information of who this person is, contact number, or anything for me to contact Verizon. I've tried calling, and I've gotten the royal one around. So whoever is this government affairs representative, I'd like that information forward to me, okay? It also says that it's a liability for your public works to come out and take care of the problem, and that it's now the homeowner's responsibility. I've already asked the homeowner several times. They refuse to do it, saying it's Matt Holly's problem. So is somebody going to contact them to see if they can take care of that problem? Who's the homeowner? Do you have the address? Um, it's 423 Langstaff Avenue, Jack and Bianca Codwell, C-A-L-D-W-E-L-L. -L. Okay. Because and I've they're, already they're paid the property, for... And they're the property owner, correct? Yeah. I've already paid for half the tree to be removed mm -hmm. back on January 10th. I don't feel the whole bill should be mine. When it's not even my tree. So I like to, uh, something to be forward further, please. Okay, thank thank you. you. Anyone else in row two? Let's move on to the next row, row three. Michael Rothmel, 33 Grand Street. Um, the talk for just a little bit um, about the township. When, the, when Mike Green and Randy Rothmel came to present um, the opportunity for the township to have two rain gardens, mm -hmm. which would divert about 144,000 gallons of stormwater a year, <coughs> the township wrote a letter of support, but unfortunately then directed them to the planning board for a full application. Um, of the 14 townships they've worked with, no other township has ever required a planning board application. And it effectively killed the project. Fortunately, there were other government entities in Mount Holly that were receptive, and there's two other places they can put in rain gardens without having, without having to go through the process. But I think it points to a larger problem, is when grant money comes in from a source that I think the township can't control, and I don't mean all five of you, um, it appears that it gets nixed. Um, when Main Street got a double, twice the grant money that... Um, that you did for co that the township did for COVID, Mr. Jones sent out a press release, making an alle defamatory allegations that were later found to be untrue, unnecessarily and for no reason. Um, when NRTC had the opportunity to get a million dollar grant, the township wouldn't support him. And the fact is, we're a small town. We rely on volunteers, and when you have people willing to put the time and effort in to get the money to get money for the township, it seems petty and small-minded to create roadblocks. And 
Um, it's just it's just a matter of culture that has to, should I think needs to change within the township because it's really problematic. It's really become a systemic issue. Mm. Thank mm. you. Yeah, he's facing the wrong direction. I can't hear. I said that it's a capital review project, and the township had to do a similar capital review project when we had Green Acres money, so it's not something that's out of the ordinary for the township. When we get grant money, we do have to do the same thing. So, appreciate it. Thank you, Josh. I do have a question regarding rain gardens. The one, um, the, not so much rain gardens, but some of the other things that were done by the environmental committee, like the, there was, I think, some plants down by the shin cabin. We can talk about that if you want to like, But like, is every project demanding that they go before the planning board? I just, we, can yeah, talk about this, we can talk about this another time. Let, let the township mm -hmm. public okay. answer your questions and we'll come back and we'll address that again. Okay. Anyone else in row, is it row three? Uh, Arlene Pfeiffer, 494 Mary Street. Uh, I sat at a planning board the other week and um, we were discussing the fair share housing, which, which is great. Uh, it's something that every ta every town needs. But I was wondering, is there a way to limit how high they can go with these buildings? Three to four stories for um, their, their glorified apartments. You're gonna put these people, low income, <coughs> into apartments basically with children. And I, I've seen Ethel Lawrence, I've worked out there before. Um, they did a great job with doing low come in. I think there were two stories, but they've almost sort of had a little bit of yard, a little place for the kids to go. I mean, and if we're gonna open up to fair share housing and, and take whatever room we have left in Mount Holly, I would really like to see it done, done a, a little more fairly for the children and the families moving into that and not just become some big project where this builder is gonna make a decent amount of money off of people that wanna come into this town. That, that, that's all I have to say. Anyone else in that row? All right, let's move on to the last row. Yes, Richard Doe, 232 Rubble Avenue. I received an email today that actually ties into what Mike Rothwell was saying and also what Elaine was saying. The email was about a C. CFP grant program accepting applications from that U.S. Forest Service Community Forest and Open Space Conservation, Conservation Program. And I'll just read this a little bit here. This is a competitive federal grant program providing funding to purchase land from private forest homeowners to become community forest open space for community benefit and conservation. Funded projects are for full acquisition of land, not conservation or other easements and protections. And this grant application is due by March 31st, 23. So this goes directly to what Mike was saying, that there are grant opportunities available. This was just a coincidence. I actually didn't even know he had this. But um, it really hammers down his point that this grant is available. I wanted to make sure that this council is aware of it. I don't know what the status of the environmental committee is. I'm looking into seeing when their meetings are. So usually it would have gone through the environmental committee, would have picked up on it somewhere. When Randy Rothmull had it, it surely would have been picked up. So I just wanted to bring this in here. And it also ties into what Arlene was saying when she said, uh, what room we have left in Mount Holly. Well, this applies right to that because what room we have left in Mount Holly, some of it is forest and the forest, the percolation into the ground, keeps the water that we have this thing up here, this clean water award. Every, everything, uh, every land that's not covered with pavement is good for the environment, good for the water, like this. And that's all I have. I just wanted to make sure that this council is 100% aware on the record that this grant's available. The time limit is it's due by March 31st. Now, if your input, if what you have coming back is that this has already been applied for, that would be nice, but that's all I have. What's the name of the grant again? It's the CFP grant program, it's, um, it's the U.S. Forest Service, USFS is the alphabet, you know, name for it. Um, but this is the standard, 
in our New Jersey Urban and Community Forestry Program we've been participating in for years. We did receive a nice award about I don't know, 2013 because we were in our tree city, whatever the heck it was called, and our cell. There it is. There's some information for you. Hopefully you move forward with it if it's not already in motion. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the last row? Seeing none, we're going to close the public portion. Uh, thank you for your comments. Let's move on to the consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk are considered routine by the council and will be enacted by one motion. Should the council member wish to discuss a consent agenda item separately, that item can be removed from the consent agenda and considered in normal sequence. Uh, before we get to it, is there anyone you want to be removed and voted on separately? Um, yes. Can I ask for resolution 2023 44 to be pulled? Yeah. That's it. All right. <coughs> anyone else? Yes, All right. <coughs> so, with the consent agenda that goes from resolution number 2023-41, 42, 43, 45, 46, and the approval bill list and the approval of department head reports. Can I get a motion? Motion to approve the consent agenda as read by Mayor Zang. A second. Any roll call? Ms. Astor? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Brown? Yes. Ms. Burkus? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Banks? Yes. Thank you. So resolutions 2023-41, 42, 43, 45, 46, the approval of the bill list and approval of the department has just passed. Now we'll vote on resolution 2023-44. This is a resolution approving and authorizing the township greater implementation plan associated with the New Jersey Neighborhood Pre Preservation Grant Program. Can I get a motion? Motion to approve. Motion to approve 2023-44. I get a second. 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 I get a roll call. <coughs> Ms. Astor? Abstain. Mr. Brown? Yes. Ms. Burkus? Abstain. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Banks? Yes. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Resolution is 2023-44 has passed. Now moving on, now do we have any matters to be presented by the township manager? <coughs> but, oh, uh, um, Tom, our solicitor? Uh, no, I'm excuse me, Mayor, thank you. All right, and <coughs> that is the agenda by council. Go ahead, Ms. Perkins. Yeah, sure, um, just a few things. First, um, I wanted to thank Jim Logue and all of the many volunteers that worked so hard for our St. Patty's Day um, celebration and parade. Uh, <coughs> job as always it gets bigger and better and more awesome year after year so I can only imagine the amount of work that we put in as well as all the volunteers and resources so I'm very thankful for that um, for all that you did. it was a great event great day um, I want to just acknowledge uh, Randy Rothmel and Mike Green um, a little, I'm disappointed in um, kind of how things transpired I did uh, see kind of the, that communication was closed today, um, but I'm thankful for their persistence um, and continuing to find ways to do their good work. Um, and then on, on the same note, um, I will reach out to our environment, environmental committee to see um, if there's something that they can do to help you know, make things like that project a little easier to get through, as well as if um, they're aware and working on the CFP grant, which have, if there's anything happening in that, I'll reach out to the environmental committee and get back to them. As well, thank you to Jim for being an organizer and organizing that was great. Right? It was an awesome day, and I know that um, I've heard from local business owner that when we have events in town, their business just explodes, and that the more things that are going on, the more our businesses you know, just benefit from that. Um, and it was good, it was fun. Um, also, um, everyone may not be aware, um, the 
in town on Saturday, April 1st. It's like a big Easter egg hunt. Um, the Presbyterian Church on Garden Street is sponsoring it. And if you go check them out on Facebook, they are looking for organizations and businesses that would participate. You just have to come up with like 400 eggs full of candy. But it's a great time. And Kim and I did it last year. Tons of kids, tons of families all over town. It's like, you know, trick or treating in April. Um, so, and encourage anyone to participate <coughs> or bring kids, grandkids. Um, and other thing, I have more of a, a question. The Neighborhood Preservation Grant Program, that is what Mojave does in lieu of participating with the county. Am I correct? As far as like, you know, giving people no. grants? No, that's a different one. That's small mm -hmm. um, Okay, that's right. Um, is the Preservation Grant Program grant program something that individual homeowners can participate in or is this something that just you do? It's a collective uh, group that goes and basically we're watching the streets of uh, Somerset to Main Street downtown area so it has to be something within there. Okay. To that. Yeah. okay. We'll, we'll be sure that on, on a website or something. You can but I mean they, you said they had a rehabilitation aspect to it last year that's not in this year's okay. home so I mean the neighborhood preservation program has a separate website for them. So. Okay, all right. Um, and that, that's it, though. And thank you for having me, guys. All right. Jim, congratulations. Thank you. Great. Uh, thank you. Like I said, Jim, you did a great job, um, along with everyone in staff and everyone on council that participated and helped along with that as well. It's been awesome. Um, we appreciate it. Look forward to next year. Um, I do know that, Jim, just one quick question. When's our first neighborhood cleanup? Uh, I believe it's April 15th. April 15th. <coughs> Which is a month, a month, pretty much a month from now. So normally on our neighborhood cleanups that we do, we pick certain areas. Wash the street was always one of the areas that we normally do. Um, I think Jim, you live on that yeah. street as well. So. Uh, we'll let that individual, I think Steve, know know that April 15th is going to be the next community type, you know, uh, cleanup program as well. And um, what's, what's your name, Miss, you said Maureen? Maureen Taylor Ford. Understand the traffic that's on Branch Street. Um, that's something that me and Josh did discuss over starting last year in terms of how we, what we can do. Um, that is a county road, um, so whatever we decide to do, the county has to approve it. So I don't know what the actual solution is that's gonna solve the actual problem, but we are looking into it. Well, is the county engineer working with, does Mount Holly have a separate engineer that works with the county? When you say look into it, like how so, am I waiting? When I say look into it, meaning the county and us will look into what is the best possible solution. I can't give you an answer on what that solution is gonna be right now. So we don't know, but we have to get together again and see, because that is a county road. They have jurisdiction over that particular. No, I understand that because it took two years for the sidewalk. So. And so, like, appreciate it. So, everything else, um, thank you. Next meeting is next month. Um, nobody has any additional comments. All right, can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye.